The morning sun shines on the gleaming hide of a muscular ranch horse. The aroma of bacon and coffee drifts from the wood cook stove at a cow camp. Silver spurs jingle as the men and women of the West get set for another day in the saddle. From the heart of Canada's finest ranching country, this is the Spirit of the West with rancher and horse trainer Hugh McLennan and his collection of music, poetry, and conversations with the folks who live and work with horses and cattle in the Spirit of the West. For those who have never seen a consummate top hand, a proud professional working cowboy on a well-trained bridle horse, working cattle on the open range, the concept of cowboy work going beyond a profession to where it becomes an art might seem strange, but believe it or not, that's how it is in the West of 2016. Cowboy pride. You see it in the horsemanship, the gear, the savvy knowledge of cattle, and every man and woman in the profession conforms to the code, but still expresses their own unique individual style. The consummate buckaroo, longtime ranch cowboy and fine horseman Miles Kingdon is back this week with some interesting observations on the finer points of cowboy style. The only thing worse than having jing bobs is riding beside a guy who does. We kind of took that clip out of context, but uh, you'll hear what it means a little later in Baxter Black as a whole cow full of cowboy wisdom. A true friend will tell you if your hat's on backwards, says Calvin. We don't do it too often, but we'll get political on the Rangeland News with some comments from the U.S. Agriculture Secretary Tom Vilsack, and I think he's a Democrat. And it's really hard to say there's one thing that Trump's... Oops, shouldn't have used that word. <laughs> on the horse training file... A uh, listener has a horse that trots like a pile driver. Is there anything she can do to smooth out the trot or even ride it more comfortably? I'll try and help. And I've got a great old classic song in the West, some information about the song. And then it's Waddy Mitchell in the Cowboy Poetry Spotlight. And we'll get to the conversation with Miles Kingdon after Dave Stamey and a song that always makes me think of Miles. Sleep in a bed roll of candies. And no CMs feed on your ear. Wind blows the dust just like buckshot. And I ain't never seen it rain much out here. Smell your own sweat in the evening. Wash up at the galvanized tank. Nearest town's 40 miles. Cook here, he don't smile And all these young horses are rank But come a tie I the eye On the back of my cavallo I hope it tie one on when I can My spurs, they don't ring much I never did sing much But I'm sure enough Buckaroo man Cold fingers stiff in the morning By noon it's a hundred and three Five-year-old slicks in the canyon And never a hint of a breeze Jug-headed hollow-back ponies Provide all with hours of grief There's snakes in the shade Choil on the parade And a half a ton of grit between my teeth But come a tie I hit the aisle On the back of my cavallo I will be tie one on when I can My spurs, they don't ring much I never did sing but I'm sure enough, buckaroo man.
Well, the consummate Buckaroo Man, Miles Kingdon, is back here at the McLennan Ranch World Broadcast Center this week. Over the years and years of cowboy and the, the episodes you survive and uh, the things you escape without serious injury and everything sometimes, it just, I don't know, <laughs> somebody's got to be looking after us, I think. You know, and I just met an old fellow with, uh, I went down and stayed with uh, my friend Bruce Sandifer and his wife and... Uh, and he wanted to introduce me to his old friend, Ray Ordway. He lives up about six hours north of Santa Barbara and inland. And he is an old Californio. One of the, that Bruce knows, one of the last of the old Californio ghettos that he knows of. And Ray and his pretty little wife, Laverne, you know, he's sh they're both sharp as a tack. He's 92. And he showed me his spade bits and his nice riatas and his good three-quarter rig outfit and his dad's outfit. And and um, it's interesting. Fellas like him that have rode all them years, men and women both, they'll say, if you think, and this was his words, if you think you're holding the strings, you can think again. Because there's somebody else got to, got the strings in their hand. Yeah. This whole uh, world of vaquero horsemanship mm -hmm. and the Californios is something you've been pretty intimate with for a long, long time. And like I was telling you earlier, I've just kind of just beginning to discover and really appreciate some of this, this bridal horse world. I mean, that's, uh, and for a long time, you didn't find a lot of that up in our part of the country, but now more and more you're seeing fellows riding mm -hmm. with uh, reins and ramal and uh, speed bit and bozolito and horses straight up on the bridle, and it, it mm -hmm. seems to be be getting a little more known up here now, do you think? Uh, oh, sure. Um, the more I see from the people in Alberta and Saskatchewan, them, there's a, a big interest in the, the bridled stock horse. You know... Um, in those calif really, and they are in a lot of those California traditions. There's some really good handy people there, and some young people, boys and girls that are so handy. And if you can just give them a couple of tips here and there, they'd be so good so much sooner than I was. And Ray, it's a funny thing. Old Ray said the same thing to Bruce and I. If you can just give some of them kids a tip, they're so handy. And their soul, their mind is so itchy to learn. And you know, we've come a long ways um, to that transition, to that st that kind of stockmanship, that style of horsemanship. And there's, even the people who don't have a spade bit in their horse's mouth, there's a lot of handy people around. Well, Miles, uh, you'll be doing a number of bridal horse clinics this year, and we'll talk about that, and I've got another neat song about cowboy pride when the Spirit of the West continues right after this. Welcome back to the Spirit of the West. Just great to have my good friend Miles Kingdon back at the ranch today, long-time working cowboy, highly respected horseman, and I sure hope we get some horseback time together this season. Now, Miles, 10 years ago when you were riding out with 10, 15 cowboys behind you, heading out 3.30 in the morning, going to be riding, working cows all day, did you sort of visualize that at this point you'd be putting on uh, bridal horse clinics around the country like you've got planned for this summer? No, I didn't. But I will say that in the tail end of the 80s, I guess I was at Nicola Ranch then. I'd been, you know, at Douglas Lake and at Barkey Ranch up north and went back to Douglas Lake again and went over to Nicola Ranch and 
Every time you change an outfit, you got to make your own string again. They'll cut you a string of horses that are broken, and you start building the rest yourself. And after you put in four years of trying hard with your mind to understand the best way to make this horse work, make him better, and and you get into trouble, and you look back over over the years, and you think to yourself, I wished I wouldn't have done that with that horse. But you know, you and your horse came out okay at the end of it, and it's all it's all learning. And if and if you look at it like I, oh, gee, I wished I would have never done that. Well, that's a kind of a bad note to quit on because you learn something from it and your horse was adaptable because horses are far more adaptable than we are if you like an animal you'll always start off your next ride in a better spot again and I always thought to myself what how neat that would be if I could teach somebody these things that they didn't have to go through as many lumps and bumps and hard rides and and um, um, reflection as I did, if I could give him a couple of pointers and help him out. But I never thought you know, I could make a living at it, and it looks like I might be able to. Mm. <laughs> well, you've got, uh, you've got clinics scheduled. Where are some of the ones coming up uh, in the spring and summer of 2016? Oh, there's some scheduled for um, Cold Stream Ranch by Vernon. Uh, it's a great place to do that they got a nice arena it's a great crowd of people there and it's a nice setting and there's cows to work that's a big thing i don't yeah. have to buy a herd of cows to help mm. oh, yeah. it's, it's yeah. nice to be able to apply that horsemanship what you're learning to a cow because all them things that whoever's been teaching you whether it's jonathan or 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 bruce or peter or or buck or whoever it is that you've been going to they can teach you all they want, and they're, but now when you apply it to a cow, then you start remembering the things they told you. Okay, and uh, we're going to clear up your comment about Jingle Bobs right after this great song. The words written by Bryn Thiessen and the music by Ben Crane that really gets to the heart of what cowboy pride is. It's the look a sunlight on silver With the smell of frost in the air And the sound Of a tired horse Blowing That keeps them Riding out there It's horses Jingled by Starlight The herd Held up For the cut the pride of those young cowboys riding And the warmth of the sun coming up Cause the memories are rhymes that bring back the times And the places the cowboy has rolled They might hang in the wind but they'll come back again And warm him when he grows old He'll remember the friendship and laughter In the field of his horse working right The sunset when day's work is over and the times around the fire at night The sound of a good cowboy singing And the words of the poems that he said The coolness of the night air he's breathing As he lays in his old canvas bed But if memories are rhymes, then what of the times When upwards his soul will roam He'll stand there amazed where the star herds now graze As he stares round his heavenly 
gladly home For the look of sunlight on silver And the smell of frost in the air The sound of a tired horse blowing We'll meet him when he's riding up there And doesn't that take us into a world that's a little bit beyond everyday horsemanship to where you've got jingle bobs on your spurs, big growl spurs jingling along and rain chains swinging in a rhythm and you and your horse are just in that that horseback rhythm gets down deep in your soul somehow, you know, isn't that? Well, a lot of guys, and I've had guys say to me before, oh, jingle bobs. The only thing worse than having jing bobs is riding beside a guy who does. <laughs> and uh, and I, I can understand that. I mean, each, uh, each to their own. But I've spent uh, quite a few long rides home by myself, and it's funny, some of them rides, you may have two hours to ride home, and you'll look around and... Holy smokes, I'm just about home. What happened to the time? Yeah. And it's that rhythm, you know, the horse gets walking along and then yeah. Jingle Bob's kind of ringing time to his step. Pretty soon his ears are hanging a little bit. Yeah. His head gets swinging a little bit and he's just a walking along. And and uh, it's, uh, if people think that you need to, that you can't meditate when you're riding, I, yeah. I, I tend to differ on that one. Right. Well, that's the beauty of cowboying, too. You cowboy with guys who got a different hat, tacoed up hat, and uh, some with a flat hat. And and uh, uh, I never found that it made me any worse when I put a flat hat on my head. It didn't <laughs> make, never did good, make a man. darn bit of difference, really, yeah. <laughs> on what I could do and couldn't do. I don't think I've ever seen you riding without a flat hat. Oh, I used to yeah. have just a hat, but I had hats that were stepped on. And, oh, and, yeah. Yeah. Had a crease that your horse invented for you, and and uh, usually an old one because I couldn't afford another new one. And, wow! And uh, but that's the thing. There's a lot of guys who just got everybody's gear is different. And that's kind of the nice thing about it. We're not in a uniform. Yeah, you it's know? it's very individualistic, and yet just about every guy that's earned his spurs and could be approaching or what you'd consider a top hand. Mm -hmm. has developed his own individual look, his own individual style over the years, it almost seems, you know. And well, that's, You can spot him up on a ridge half a mile away just by his outline sometimes, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, the other way he sits on his horse, and I know some guys that are top hands that uh, you're glad to have beside you when the wreck is on Yeah, because they're doing things. And, and uh, but you know, I've always come back to my horse, and uh, you have a couple rough rides once in a while in your life, and uh, it always comes back to a ride. And my life has sure been a ride, so I fancy it up a little bit, you know. I like oh, my yeah. silver stuff, yeah. and I like to dress my horse up. Yeah. Call the dogs and put out the fire. This is Baxter Black on Monday here to start the week with a little peek at marginal quotes. When you go to B&W Hitch Factory for a visit, you won't need a passport or a Chinese translator. Why? Because their hitches are made right here in the heart of America. Sometimes that gets lost in the whir of our global economy, but lots of American businesses have survived the recession without cheapening their products or outsourcing jobs. Instead, they chose to stay at home, share the work, and spread the benefits. Learn more about what B&W stands for by going to AmericanMadeHitch.com. As long as you've got good elimination, you've got it made. Uncle Leonard said that. If a man can't drive in a bar ditch, he's got no business on the highway. My Uncle Tink. When asked how she got to be president, Anita replied, I missed the meeting. Tom Hall says, I enjoy all company, some when they arrive and some when they leave. A true friend will tell you if your hat's on backwards, says Calvin. I'd rather be at the head of the ditch with a shovel than at the bottom with a decree. Tom on irrigation rights. 
If they won't come, you can't stop them, said my old friend Jim B. He's stooping to new heights, said Sandy. His eyes are so squinty they could blindfold him with dental floss. That's my old friend Bucker. They teach chickens to lay eggs by walking back and forth in front of them with a hatchet humming, Mmm, good. Mmm, good. That's according to Doug. The right to be heard does not include the right to be taken seriously. By Hubert H. If you want to put out a fire, start your own. By Hoot. You have to know Mr. Dewey well in order to dislike him. By Margaret T. Bank examiners come in after the battle and shoot the wounded. According to Boyd. Horseshoeing's not so hard. It's just a dread of doing it, says Carl. His sleeping bags smell like they drove geese into it and beat them to death, says my friend Ole K. It's been a month of Mondays, says Cheryl. Sometimes you have no choice, so take it. On fundraising, don't put all your hands in one pocket. Judy says if you're smart, you'll always believe in Santa Claus. And finally, John says, sure, you can sell out when things are good. But then what will you do? This is Baxter Black on Spirit of the West with Hugh McLennan. Brought to you by B&W Turnover Bowl. This is cowboy singer, songwriter, and poet Bren Hill. Cowboy poetry is the voice of the working West. As alive today as it has been for over 125 years, telling the stories of real ranch life. Learn more about it and Cowboy Poetry Week at CowboyPoetry.com, a project of the Center for Western and Cowboy Poetry. Well, Ian Tyson's going to be back on the road very soon. Good news, among his first concerts since his open-heart surgery will be the Griffin Park Theater in Brooks, Alberta, April 26th, then the Genoa, Nevada Cowboy Festival, April 30th, and in Red Deer, Alberta, May 3rd at the Memorial Center, May 4th at the Bailey Theater in Camrose, and on May 6th at the Cochrane Alliance Church. And here's a real seasonal one for me. Should have seen it in your eyes I could never read your eyes So lost in love was I They'd always take me by surprise You were dreaming all the South are oh, your love comes and goes It's just like the weather, babe Only heaven really knows Just like springtime in Alberta Warm sunny days in the skies of blue Then without a warning Another winter storm comes raging through And the mercury's falling I'm left all alone Springtime in Alberta Choose me to See the storm clouds coming Lord, they're dark across the sky The same look that I've seen so many times When I've looked into your eyes So I'll turn up my old car Like springtime in Alberta 
Warm sunny days, endless skies of blue Then without a warning Another winter storm comes raging through And the mercury's falling I'm left all alone Springtime in Alberta News of the Rangeland, a roundup of news and coming events from around the West. We'll tell you what's new under the Western sky right after this word from the Cattlemen of Western Canada. Ranching is an important part of our community. From farm to fork, it takes a year and a half to bring beef to your table. It all begins with a calving in the spring of the year. After six months in their mother's care, calves are weaned and begin a feeding regimen where they are fed both hay and grain. Ranchers are proud to provide wholesome beef for BC families. Now the Rangeland News. Top of page one, Canadian cattlemen are pretty familiar with the policies of U.S. Agriculture Secretary Tom Vilsack and he was, of course, front and center in the long drawn out cool country of origin labeling debate and a lot of other cross border issues. As his term winds down, a reporter asked Vilsack what he thought his legacy might be. It's a hard question for me to answer because the, this department is a fabulous department. It is an amazing department and it does so much. And it's really hard to say there's one thing that trumps, whoops, shouldn't have used that word, <laughs> that overcomes. Maybe, maybe it's that uh, we've had the uh, seven best years in trade ag exports in the history of the country. No, I, I, look, legacies, you guys will decide what that is. I, I, I just, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of the work we've done. I'm honored to have had this job. Farmers with oats to sell and end users willing to buy them are far apart on price. Major U.S. oats customers are well covered for the time being with enough to last a few months worth of milling, according to Ryan McKnight of Linear Grain in Carmen, Manitoba. He added that higher pricing was available from time to time from Canadian millers, but buyers and sellers are generally far apart on price, with the futures trading below U.S. $2 a bushel. That zero basis only works out to about $2.60 a bushel when the exchange rate is factored in. He said Manitoba farmers wanted at least $3 a bushel for oats. And he said quality issues with the northern Saskatchewan crop for another issue in the oats market, keeping some supplies out of the regular channels. Well, the big prime time cattle company and cutting edge sale in Williams Lake held back on March the 5th was a huge success with 57 bulls sold in one hour and 27 minutes and the high selling prime time tater 420 selling to 141 man ranch for $6,500. Second high seller went to Debbie and Ken Elnicki for $6,200. Primetime HD Linear 417 Cutting Edge Cattle Company High Seller was Cutting Edge El Dorado 498B selling to the Chuzzicut Ranch for $5,900. Now here's a question for you. What country eats more beef per person than any other in the world? Well, it's not the U.S. and it's not Canada, it's not Britain. The answer is Argentina. But beef loving folks there do have a problem. Beef is now so expensive in Argentina that once was the third largest exporter that packing plants are about to start importing cattle from neighboring countries for the first time in almost two decades. Argentina's cattle industry, the third largest exporter a decade ago, was upended by the end of price controls and a devaluation of the peso under newly elected President Mauricio Macri. Well, Ace of Clubs Quarter Horses will again be providing the Colts for this year's Trainers Challenge at the Red Deer Main Event, April 21st to 24th. This year, they'll all be mares, each one from a different sire, and they should be pretty. There's a Palomino, a Sorrel, a Blue Roan, and a Buckskin. And a tip of the old cowboy hat this week goes to Dr. Cecilia Rushkowski from Oyen, Alberta, this year's recipient of the Boehringer Ingelheim WCABP Veterinarian of the Year Award. 
She oper operated the Oyen Veterinary Services Clinic since she graduated from vet school in 1984. You know, there's great reading in every issue of Alberta Beef Magazine, and you can subscribe online or by calling 403-250-1090. And Bonnie Wernicke has a great story looking back at the year in review for the cattle industry in the January issue. Just a quick reminder that there are regular cattle sales every Wednesday, pre-sort sales on Monday, and horse sales twice a month at the Innisfail Auction Market, you can see all the details at InnisvaleAuctionMarket.com. And that takes us down to the final item. Oh, oh, trouble in the country. This couple had been arguing for years, and the husband died mysteriously. After the investigation, she was charged with murder, poisoning his morning coffee. Now, in his cross-examination at the trial, the Crown Prosecutor said, now, didn't you feel the slightest bit of pity for him, knowing he was about to die and he was probably totally unaware of it? And she said, well, yes, I guess I did at one point. And when was that, the prosecutor said. And she replied, that was when he asked for a refill. And that's the Rangeland News. Coming up on the Horse Training File, how to smooth out a rough trot and make it more comfortable for the horse and the rider. And then more from my guest, Miles Kingdom, when the Spirit of the West continues right after this. Welcome back to the Spirit of the West. This is a pretty nice horse, but man, he trots like a pile driver. Well, that's not comfortable, but I'll offer a few suggestions to make it easier on the rider and the horse on this week's horse training file coming right up. First, though, for those of you who've been asking about the next Spirit of the West cruise, I'm happy to tell you that it will take place in June of 2017, and the whole gang will be going way up north, north to Alaska, way up north, north to Alaska, north to Alaska, the gun north for us is on. That's right. My wife Billy and I will be hosting a great group of Spirit of the Westers aboard the beautiful Holland America ship, the Nordam. And we'll sail out of the spectacular Vancouver Harbor, visiting Ketchikan, Juneau, Skagway, Glacier Bay, and then we'll have two spectacular days of sightseeing in Denali National Park. Then we'll board the magnificent McKinley Railroad with their sightseeing dome cars and hopefully have a good look at North America's highest peak, Mount McKinley. And then it's on to Anchorage. We'll have our Western music concerts, sing-alongs, great food, and it's a trip that's been on the bucket list of a lot of folks for a long time. And this is important. You can save over $200 a person if you book before the 1st of May, 2016, this year. Hey, that's a $400 savings per couple. And the whole package includes return airfare from Calgary, Edmonton, and Vancouver, and includes ground transfers in Vancouver and Anchorage, plus all of our Spirit of the West group gatherings, all port and government taxes, all onboard meals, entertainment, and room service, and a special group reception, reception, lots of networking opportunities, our special Spirit of the West gifts, the highly coveted Spirit of the West t-shirt, and a special Spirit of the West tour just for our group in Juneau. Now here's something else. If you like traveling by rail, we have an optional Rocky Mountaineer rail package to travel from Calgary to Vancouver, available on request. Our entire schedule with prices and everything else is available on the cruise page at our website, hugh-mclennan.com. And you can get all the information at this toll-free number, 1-800-530-530. 0131. Now the horse training file. Here's the question. I have a 12-year-old paint horse, and whenever I ride her, I lose my balance when we trot. She has a very rough, stiff trot. I barely lope her because we go through a war to go faster than a trot. I can't relax my seat because of her gait. Would it help if I rode her a lot every day? I use a hackamore and a western saddle. I do some cow work, trail work, and just ride around the pasture. Well, here's a quote from my old pal Waddy Mitchell, who you will hear on this week's Cowboy Poetry Spotlight, by the way. Posting at the trot 
is the most comfortable way for the horse and the rider to cover a lot of miles. Now, trotting is the gait that horses use more than any other when uh, they're turned out in a herd situation in big areas. If they're moving from place to place, most of the time they do it at a trot. And I remember years ago, there was a kind of a perception that cowboys didn't post. And some horses have a trot so smooth that you can sit it, but most horses don't. About 90% of the time, when I'm riding at a trot, I'll post the trot, and we do trot a lot of miles. It's good for several reasons. More comfortable for you and the horse, and by understanding the diagonal your horse is trotting on, you can help him stay balanced and help set him up for correct lead departures. His left front and his right hind leave the ground at the same time. And if you rise in your stirrups as his right hind and left front go forward, you're on the correct diagonal to be riding a big circle in that direction. And of course, it's the opposite for the opposite direction. It takes practice to recognize the diagonal and rise and drop in time with it, but it's an excellent exercise for the rider, and it really does make you a better horseman. And that's the horse training file. Something we're pretty convinced makes our horses better is that daily feeding of Hoffman's Horse Ration. And you can find out more about it at hoffmanshorseration.com. That's the horse training file. These horses are headed to the third annual Top Gun Horse Sale, the largest selection of broke horses offered for sale in Western Canada. Preview April 16th at 5 p.m. Sale starts April 17th at High Noon Cal Nash Event Center, Pinoca, Alberta. Riding, roping, ranch, trail, barrel racing, team sorting, kids' horses, broke teams, young stock, and much more. Rain or shine, everything is inside. For more information, see TopGunHorseSales.com or call Jordan, 403-783-0246. Well, just before I get back to my guest, Miles Kingdon... I was thinking that I could probably make up an entire program's music list with songs with the same title. Last week I played one from Jim Reader called Cavern Time. Now here's Gene Prescott. Same title, different song. The days are getting longer, early spring has shown its face. The mudroom's clean and orderly, supplies are in their place. Then suddenly it happens on a crisp and chilly morn. We go into action cause our first calf is born It's calving time, we'll be working night and day We've waited all year long and we're ready come what may Life is a cycle and it happens every year when we put our lives on hold Cause it's calving time around here Not much we could do The mudroom needs a scrubbing There's bottles in the sink And after what those calves brought in this place It really stinks It's having time We're working night and day We've waited all year long We're ready come what may Life is a cycle and this happens every year we put our lives on home Cause it's cabin time round here Well, another week has passed us by I have nothing to report Except that sleeping patients Are both getting mighty short You can't get in the mudroom This place is one big mess Why anyone would live like this Is anybody's guess been working night and day We've waited all year long And we're ready come what may Life is a cycle and this happens every year When we put our lives on hold Cause it's cabin time round here And now just like those cabin cows We both were slowing down I'm watching the place today Cause hubby's gone to town he went off to a bull sale, it's like an endless chain. We'll breed those cows for next year, then we'll do it all again. When it's calving time, we'll be working night and day. We'll be waiting all year long, we'll be ready come what may. Life is a 
It's cabin time round here. Yeah. Now that hits pretty close to home, and Gene and Gary are seeing some great black calves hitting the ground at their place in old, near Old Vallo, Texas, as we speak. And they're even posting pictures of some of them on Facebook. You know, about the only thing better than spending several hours visiting with Miles Kingdon is spending time riding with him. An encyclopedia of cowboy knowledge, and Miles... It's really interesting observing the various styles, trappings, and characteristics of today's working cowboys. And a lot of guys too, you know, uh, a lot of the guys that cowboys when we when we were younger, uh, there was a thing about girls cowboying. Oh, that's all they can do is brush their horse nice. <laughs> you know something? Uh, uh, my wife, when it come time to cutting the breeze and busting through the yeah. brush and bringing a cow, some old dry cow with a number nine in her tail, back to the herd again. She didn't mess around. It came back. Oh, and yeah. She could read cows good, too. Yeah. And, and uh, actually, she's one of the best people I've ever had working the corner for me in a sorting pen, you know. Yeah. My daughters cowboyed with me a lot, too, when they were little, and I just see so many. I'm glad to see girls getting to do this stuff more and more, because the big outfits as they were, there just was only one bullpen, and you can't have yeah. make mixing the girls in there, and it was tough, you know. Um, me and my wife, she cowboyed on them out on the outfit with me, and I see so many kids today that there's a lot of girls they they're in it for the love of the critter, yeah, and they want to be with that horse, and they want to do better with their horse, and they want a job for their horse, which is punching cows someplace. And uh, it's nice to see because everybody didn't ever get that chance. Yeah. There's a lot of kids that want to do that. Yeah. And that's so nice to see. Uh, I know Billy and I have, uh, we've ridden a lot of unforgettable trails together over the years. And a lot of time was just the two of us. And Billy, like so many women, has, has a great understanding of cow psychology mm -hmm. and cow sense and anticipation. And she can read a cow's mind. Way better than I can. And I remember one of the quotes that she said to me that has always stuck with me, and it was a tough job the two of us were having to try and do, and I wasn't doing too well. And finally she called me over and she said, look, if you'd stop thinking like a cowboy and start thinking like a cow, we'll get these cows up the hill where they're supposed to go. <laughs> and she was absolutely right. Yeah, that's it. You know, yeah. Well, you know, uh, we've just touched the surface of your collection of real-life adventures, Miles, and I hope you can make it back here again real soon. And in the meantime, our classic Song of the West and the Cowboy Poetry Spotlight still to come when the Spirit of the West continues right after this. Welcome back to the Spirit of the West. This is our classic Western song segment, and today we're looking at a, a song that was actually based on a poem by the legendary poet Bruce Kiskadden, who retired from cowboying in 1926 to drive chariots in the original Ben-Hur movie. And he hung out around Los Angeles, turned his cowboy hat and boots in for a bellhop's monkey suit, and he spent the next couple of days toting bags and running an elevator in a Hollywood hotel. And in the words of Hal Cannon, commenting on Kiskadden's life, he said, There's no darker place than the edge of the spotlight. I figured he always meant this poem to be a song. So Hal Cannon set this song to music. And here to sing it, Jill Jones and the Hayes County Gals, called Hitting the Trail Tonight. <laughs> Yeah. 
Standing in the cowboy poetry spotlight this week, possibly the best-known cowboy poet in all the West. He's managed some of Nevada's biggest ranches, grew up horseback with a rope in his hand. He's a master of the 60-foot riata, slick horn, and bridle horse, and he's been everywhere. The Tonight Show with Jay Leno, Johnny Carson, and the very first Kamloops Cowboy Festival 20 years ago. And his words in this piece of poetry often run through my mind on an early morning ride. Here's Waddy Mitchell. There ain't nothing like the feeling that you get down deep inside as you trot out in the morning when you've hired on to ride. And your mount's enthusiastic, and the air is crisp and new, and there's lively conversation going on amongst the crew. There's some bridle crickets chirping. Jingle bobs tap out a tune on one side. The sun is rising. Just ahead there sets the moon. Shadows high trot there beside you, elongated, keeping pace, reassuring you ain't hobbled by restrictive time or space. Out in front, the boss is posting to the same beat as his song, and the realization hits you. You're right where you belong. It's then you start appreciating you're on trails where few have trod and you wonder how you ever doubted if there really is a God. At top of ridge, the boss reigns in so we all gather up around. It's from here he'll call the circle, so you step off to the ground, loosen up your latigo, air your pony's back. You arrange again the blankets, then you realign your cat. Then you mount back up to get dropped off, check to see who's on each side. You're glad that you're a cowboy, and you feel this twinge of pride. You ate breakfast by the Coleman, then hurried round to beat the sun. You got 11 miles behind you, but it's here the work's begun. Now, in town when folks must travel to their workplace every day, it's said that they're commuting to their job to earn their pay. They'll choke in crazy traffic jams, fight for seats on bus or train. It's a wonder that this ritual doesn't drive them all insane. We too, I guess, commute to work as the job at hand dictates, but we 
commune while we're commuting. And what a difference that makes. Well, thank you so much for making the ride this week, and I sure hope you can join us right here next week at the same time. And thanks again to our great support crew, Mark and Kathy McMillan. You can find out all about their great place, Meadow Springs Guest Ranch, by logging on to meadowsprings.com. And be sure and check out the latest issue of Canadian Cowboy Country Magazine. It's at your newsstands, or you can subscribe online at cowboycountrymagazine.com, or just call 1-800-943-7336. And if you get a chance, check out our website at hugh-mclennan.com where you can listen to past shows on our archives page. Find lots of good stuff on our merchandise page, including CDs of past programs, DVDs, and much more. Till next week, I'm Hugh McLennan. Hope to see you down the trail somewhere real soon. <laughs>